Clark. It's been a while, aside from the video I just made about my new book, it's been three months since I put out a video of any kind while I was writing, and actually ten months, I counted it up, ten months since I last did a video on anything other than Kabbalah. So, I'm starting afresh, shall we say. Um, I've let go of the old Offerings uh, series and I've started a new series called Musings, which is basically the same thing, just a different title and a little bit different graphic. Um, and I'm starting with a subject totally out of left field, okay? <laughs> so, what I want to talk about today, well, I'm a wanderer. I mental wander, I astromental wander, and I physio astromental wander. Physio astromental wandering is very limited these days, pretty much just in my own little small town of Cloverdale, California. I don't travel. And my astromental wandering is a little more extensive, but my mental wandering is I go everywhere. Primarily, I am a terrestrial wanderer. I explore this planet. It's such a beautiful place. There is just so much happening in this planet. Um, so many beautiful things to see and experiences to be had. Um, so, in all of this wandering, I have come across several instances that I find very healing. Um, aside from the recreation of mental and astromental wandering, um, there are certain health benefits and certain magical benefits. Um, so, that's what I'm gonna talk about today. First, what really got me into looking at um, the various healing opportunities through wandering was my experience with rain. I love rain. When it's raining, I just light up. When it's raining, you know, I leave my body almost instantly to go outside in the rain. Rain has an incredibly healing and cleansing effect on the mental body. Okay, um, all kinds of rain. Each kind of rain has a slightly different effect. The most appealing and the most pleasing type of rain to mental wander in is a misty rain. It's still a downward movement of water, but the raindrops are just so fine that it's like being in a mist, but still it's a rainy mist. This sort of adheres to the mental body and is very cleansing. Rain on the mental body is cleansing. The, the rain passes through the mental body and cleanses as it passes through. It can also be very energizing depending on what type of rain you're encountering. Um, just a sort of a plain rain where the water's just coming down. Not a whole lot of wind, no lightning, no thunder, just rain is incredibly healing. Um, and cleansing. Um, yeah, those are the, the two main things. It is healing and cleansing to the mental body. It's calming, it's relaxing, it rids you of all concerns to finding just a very peaceful place. So when it's raining, I'll go sit on the top of my roof and just enjoy the rain or float around 
through the rainstorm and find those pockets where the rain is heavier, where the rain is lighter, and to follow the rain as it passes over the terrain. All these things are very pleasing. Now, a more active rainstorm with the wind really whipping around and etc., you then encounter more than just the effect of the rain itself you get more the effect of the spirit of the storm. Every storm has a personality. It is an entity, um, a cohesive awareness with a specific purpose, a specific character, a specific personality. And so the more active the environment is, the wind, uh, you know, the, the beating rain, all of these things add to the experience. And this can be very energizing. The most energizing for the mental body is when there is thunder and lightning. The electricity, the, the exchange of energy between the earth and the atmosphere, um, is very stimulating to the mental body, as well as being cleansing with the rain. But sometimes the cleansing is gentle, and sometimes the cleansing is, you know, really comes with a, a smack. Um, and that's true of all healing, you know. It can be gentle, it can be forceful, it can be sudden, etc. So, there's mental wandering in the rain. Now, astromental wandering in the rain does not add anything except in the really dramatic storms. It's a little easier to connect at the astral level with the, the drama of the character of the storm, okay? And that can be astrally stimulating as well. But still the main effect in any rainstorm is in the mental body. Now, physio-astromental wandering. Now, by physio-astromental wandering, I mean I'm in my physical body, but I am also fully aware of my astral body and my awareness, my mental body. So I am aware of all three bodies. And I am therefore capable, I mean, it's very easy to focus my attention in each one of these bodies independently. So I can discern, while in my physio astromental body, where, which body is being most affected by the experience. Walking physically in the rain. Now, this has the same effect on the mental body but it also has a wonderful effect on the physical body. It sort of bypasses the astral body, <coughs> except again in terms of the dynamic storm situation, but just a normal rain on the physical body, or the physio mental bodies. Um, there is an electrical grounding, an electromagnetic grounding that happens with the Falling rain connects us with the earth in a way like no other experience we can have. Okay? And that is very balancing, very cleansing, very energizing to the physical body as well. Okay, so that's wandering in the rain. I recommend it to everybody. Now, part of physio mental wandering in the rain is our, our weirdness around getting wet, walking in the rain. We have this sort of cultural fear of being wet in the rain. Now, you've got to overcome that in order to get these benefits this is where the astral part takes it, you know, it plays its part. Um, we need to overcome that astral emotional 
uh, fear of rain, of getting wet. We need an umbrella. We got to run. We can't, you know, get wet. Um, we got to overcome that in order to benefit from the physical effects of the rain. Yeah. Okay. The next thing that I want to talk about is astromental, uh, commonly known as astral wandering, but it's always astromental. The mental body is in the astral body. It's the awareness that's doing the wandering. Um, <clears throat> Astromental wandering in the full moon light. Now, this full moon light is the basis of so much magic that we do. Um, <clears throat> the energy of the full moon on the astral body is really intense. Just really intense. You've never astromental wandered in the moonlight, full moonlight, I suggest you do it in the next opportunity. The day before full moon, the night of full moon, and the night after full moon are the prime times. And the night of full moon is the best of all. And you will become so energized that you can do just incredible things with the energy that you just naturally accumulate from astromental wandering in the full moon light. That can be very powerful. And it, it gives you an opportunity to do numerous magical workings with all of that energy. Okay? Primarily astral related magical workings. Astrophysical workings. Now <clears throat> the effect is on the astral body, less so on the mental body. There's a slight stimulation of the awareness, but it's nothing like the effect on the astral body. And the effect on the physical body, physio mental wandering in the, the full moon, is sort of negligible. Um, the main effect is in the astral body. And again, it can be used, um, it can also be used for self-healing astral self-healing especially. Um, <clears throat> now, mental wandering, um, I see, like I said, I, I, I wander everywhere. I wander into the earth. I see, sink down into the earth and explore what is beneath my feet. Now, done mentally, alone, just mental wandering, um, it can be very illuminating, you know, very educational, uh, and astoundingly beautiful. Um, but when doing it astramentally, it's very, very easy in that circumstance to immediately shift to an exploration of the realm of the earth elementals as opposed to just the planetary earth. <coughs> That's less, uh, pr less prone to that mental wandering, but when astral wandering, the, the association with the soil, the earth below our feet, with the earth elementals is so strong that that differentiation is hard to maintain. Okay. So, if you want to astromental wander among the earth elemental realm, a good place to do it is to sink down into the planet. It's sort of an open door there. Um, and mental wandering, it, it's, this is more recreational than anything to do with the benefits of health, to health or any sort of magical workings. Okay. It's to satisfy the curiosity. 
Um, now, it's a little different if you're going mental wandering into a body of water. Um, <clears throat> like going into the depths of the ocean, okay? Now, this has very little impact on the mental body um, in terms of healing or, or, or uh, uh, accumulation of, uh, of uh, energy. Um, it has much more effect on the astral body. Um, going into the depths of the ocean uh, it's as if you feel the intense pressure and the intense cold with your astral body, but only to a certain extent. It's sort of hard to describe. So it does have an effect on the astral body in those ways. Um, for just curiosity, I recommend just with the mental body. You can go anywhere with the mental body. Um, to feel the effects of that pride, what, what it means to be so far inside water, um, go with your astral body. Um, <clears throat> doing the same thing in a river or a stream is totally different. Um, here, the effect on the mental body is very cleansing. It's much like the rain, which is a downward flow, right? In a river or stream, there's also a downward flow, but it's much more lateral than it is uh, horizontal, I mean, uh, a vertical, much more horizontal than vertical. Um, <clears throat> So it's here the water is flowing through you and it is taking with it anything that you want to give to it, okay? Unlike the rain, which just automatically cleanses, the water, the, the river or, or creek water is more a matter of choice and what you want to give to the flow, okay? And that also holds true for astromental wandering into uh, a moving, uh, a living uh, body of water, okay? Now, the rivers and creeks are much different than the ocean, okay? They're totally different beings. Okay, so uh, our relationship as human beings is very different to the creeks and the rivers than it is with the ocean and the still waters, the still deep waters, <clears throat> relatively still. Um, so with the rivers and the creeks, it's all about the movement of the water and also the submersion in the uh, astromental uh, bathing, shall we say, there is the feeling, remember this is the sentient body, there is the feeling of being enclosed. And that is also very healing, very reassuring, hmm? and very comforting. <clears throat> and in the rivers especially it is very easy to make that transition into the realm of the beings of the water element okay of the various types of water to astro, astro mentally travel in the rivers are easiest to transition into the elemental realm. Okay. Now, the next element to deal with here would be fire. 
Now, this is very interesting. Mental wandering into the middle of an erupting volcano. It will just blow your mind, you know, that to witness so much energy, you know, it's, whoa, such a release of pent-up energy. This is cleansing in a totally different way. This isn't a downward sort of cleansing. This is an eruption yeah, that you feel mentally. You know, it's, uh, it's not like feeling something physically. It's, yeah, that's really hard to describe. The, the difference between a mental feeling and an astral feeling. Now, traveling into a, a, a volcano, erupting volcano, astramentally, is even more dynamic, more sensorial than um, just the mental presence. Um, yeah, how to describe that difference? Now, when I wander, um, <clears throat> I, okay, when I'm mental wandering, the, uh, the isolation of my mental body from my astrophysical shells is not usually um, very extreme. In other words, there's still a considerable connection to my sensorial bodies, okay? So... When I'm mental wandering, I will often, it will often translate through my awareness into an astral or physical sensation. So I will recognize a, a physical sensation there. Okay? When I'm astromental wandering, my uh, isolation is much more severe from my physical body. So there is very little um, physical participation, uh, awareness of my travel. This is not necessary, really, because I'm taking my sentient body with me. I don't need the physical sensation as well. It doesn't add anything to it. Um, so, <clears throat> when I say that, to the mental body, yeah, feel this eruption, that's really what I'm relaying here, is the astrophysical echoes of that mental experience, okay? And that's something anybody can do, mental wandering. It's up to you how involved your astrophysical uh, bodies are in the mental wandering. I can mental wandering, mental wander while I'm speaking to you. It's that easy to separate a quantity of awareness, okay? It doesn't have to be my whole awareness, right? <coughs> anyway, so there is fire, and if you are doing this astromentally in the heart of a volcano, it's very easy to trans transfer into an exploration of the, the realm of the fire beings, the elemental beings. Um, in fact, it's kind of difficult to separate that out there, much like it is with the water, okay? um, or rather the earth. <laughs> Um, so, that just leaves the air. Now, there's really not much to be gained from mental wandering in the atmosphere. 
other than, you know, sort of a, an eagle's eye perspective. Um, it is very pleasant to fly with birds. Crows are especially fun um, because crows will recognize you. Um, I'm, I have this happen all the time where I, I fly with specific crows and they recognize my mental presence. Occasionally I will astramentally fly with the crows, but it's much easier in my mental body to just be with the birds. Um, so crows are my most frequent flying companions. Now that is very educational, to fly with birds. I've flown with birds of all types, and you get to understand how they fly. What's happening? It's like the vultures. What they're doing is they're tracking smells. You know, at these great heights, smells, you know, rise up the, the air currents and they smell them. And their smell, smellers are so precise that they can then follow that smell down to its origin, right? <coughs> Um, I've flown with swallows, and in the evening, the swallows swarm. And what I discovered is what they're doing is they're feeding on the insects that also swarm in the evening as the temperature begins to change and the light begins to lower. They're there, just zooming around feeding on all these little insects and they make a specific call that stuns the insect in midair so that they can swoop in and catch them. You know, so you learn all of these things about the creatures that live in the air. But there's not so much to be learned or witnessed, experienced from the air itself. I could say the wind, there, well, yeah, but see, these are like a tornado. This is a storm, it's not the air. This is a being in the atmosphere that lives in the air but it is not the air itself, okay? So that's different. And, you know, things like tornadoes are hurricanes. Whoa. These are very interesting beings. Yeah, tornadoes especially. Yeah, and they exist throughout the universe. <laughs> it's really wild. Um, any rate, <clears throat> so I think that's pretty much it for my little talk about the joys of physio astromental wandering. Okay. Oh, actually, yes, we'll do one more thing here. Physio astromental wandering in the intense heat sun and the heat and the intense cold. Well, I forgot about snow as well. <clears throat> okay, so let's start with snow. Snow. Mental wandering in the snow doesn't have very much effect, okay? Astromental wandering in the snow, however, does. The snow seems to sort of collect on the outlines of the astral form, on the energetic of the astral form. There is an interaction with the crystalline nature of water. 
It's specifically the crystalline nature of the water that is interacting with the astral body. And it's again not really cleansing, but it's comforting. Comforting like a hug. It feels like you're being hugged by the snow. Um, and that's specifically a gentle snow. Uh, the thicker the snow, the better. The bigger the flakes of snow, the better. Okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> extreme heat. <clears throat> I live in California. We have quite a variety of temperatures here. It never gets as quite as cold as it does other places in the world, but it tends to get a lot hotter than it does other places in the world. We've had temperatures of almost 110 degrees Fahrenheit so far this year, okay? So, <clears throat> modern humans, in general, in the Western world at least, the Northern Hemisphere, um, are afraid of the sun. We, you know, and the heat, really. We tend to have our air conditioners to keep it, you know, within a certain range of comfort, okay? Um, and we put on all kinds of stuff on our skin, cover ourselves up, run from one shade, bit of shade to another um, as much as we can, all right? Um, again, in order for what I'm going to tell you to work, you have to first get over that astral, emotional fear of the naked sun. <coughs> the naked sun on your skin, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Once you do, and you can go out into the sun in your physio astramental body, that's with full awareness of all three bodies simultaneously, and totally let go of any resistance and any fear, and feel the rays of the sun penetrating through your skin into your body, flowing into your body and through your body with your physio mental body. Feel it penetrating on all three of these levels. This is very healing. It does not harm you in any way. Now, there is, of course, the limitations. Like when I do this in the full blazing sun here, the UV has gotten to be so extreme that it does get to be unhealthy. Plain and simple. My, the cells of my body cannot stand that intense a UV radiation for very long. So I don't do this very long. I do it only for the, the length of time that it is comfortable to me. But the heat takes on a totally different dimension. It's not this thing I've got to stop happening to my body. It's something that passes through my body, warms me up, definitely, but in a way that is healing and harmonizing. You know, I feel connected with what's happening on the earth. This downward flow of the solar radiation through through my body. When you let that happen, physio mentally, it's very healing. Mentally, doesn't have that much effect. Astro-mentally, it has a minor effect. Okay? But when combined with the physical body, 
with all three of them together, it definitely affects all three bodies pretty much equally. Now, the same also holds true for extreme cold. When we let go of that emotional resistance to being cold, oh, I've got to warm up, I close up, you know, when we let go of that and relax into it and experience it physio mentally, it's very healing. It's very healing. It realigns everything in your three bodies. Okay? Plain and simple. It's the healing of the magnetic nature. Okay? So, that then is the end of what I have to say about wandering. The healing, for healing and recreation. Okay, so I don't know what my next video will be about. I don't know when it will be. So if you have any ideas, feel free to, you know, mention them. Uh, some people have asked for a series of definitions, you know, like words that we use in the Barnistic, Hermetic, Kabbalistic uh, uh, world um, that you don't understand or haven't been fully explained. You know, sit and put a note in the comments and we'll see what we can do. All right? So, till next time. Bye-bye.